All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to this episode of O365A. So in this episode, we're going to tackle Teams device updates. And there's been a slew of them announced at Ignite and just over the last couple months. So we thought we'd do a, a quick rundown and give you a 15-minute uh, what you need to know segment so you can be all caught up on Teams devices. So I'll kick things off with uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms uh, feature announcements. Some of these came out at Ignite. Um, one of the things that was announced was direct join for Blue Jeans and GoToMeetings is coming. Uh, this is fantastic because basically that'll uh, expand the list of partners where direct guest join is is offered right from Microsoft Teams, and uh, you'll be able to join um, a third party meeting right from a Teams Rooms device. And uh, this is expected to roll out in the first half of 2022. Also, uh, there was a, a room check-in uh, directly from Teams panel announced. What this allows you to do is do an in-person room check-in uh, for attendance and to also maximize uh, capacity of that, uh, that room. So what happens is uh, users can check in the room directly just by tapping a button right on the panel. And, um, or you can leave it to a room occupancy sensor that will sense uh, if anybody's in the room. And if nobody's using uh, the room, it'll free it up for other people to uh, to reserve that room and use it. Um, yeah, and that's coming and just at Ignite, you said coming in, in the following months. So I expect that in two to three months. Uh, another one that was uh, announced was hot desking on uh, Teams display. So this will provide a way to reserve uh, a team's workspace ahead of time, and more importantly, just walk in and gain access and sign into your, your team's account so that you can make uh, calls and um, do ad hoc meetings with your personal account right from the team's display. And lastly, uh, something that I don't know a lot about, but uh, they there's recently uh, uh, Teams has announced support for uh, Facebook portal devices. So basically this allows you to launch uh, the Teams app on a new generation of Facebook portal hardware. Um, this uh, Microsoft did not certify these hardware devices, so it's not like a true MTR display um, experience, but uh, for those who use Facebook portal um, devices, this could be really useful for you. So that's coming in December of 2021, so any day now. Uh, Habib, I think you had some announcements on uh, the uh, device management area. Yeah, so I mean, now that you have uh, all these devices rolled out, you need to be able to um, manage them. So from a Teams admin center, they've expanded the, the scope of uh, Teams devices as we were talking about. So uh, currently today, there's like Teams rooms on Windows, Teams rooms on Android uh, in phones, and then they've expanded it to uh, also include um, uh, panels, display, uh, and then um, SIP devices, which Michael and Dino will talk about uh, a little later on. So with that, once you have all these devices in, you know, registered against Teams, you have to be able to manage them. So they're coming out with a new device analytics ad analytics dashboard, which contains all of the different devices that you have in your organization and allows you to see like um, all of the metrics across like different in um, um, inventory distribution in the locations, like weekly utilization. Uh, you know, if there's issues, you can focus on specific devices. Uh, and filter and filter down the data. Uh, you can also export the data out. You can share it to channels as well as what they're saying. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so then you can basically uh, utilize these key metrics to focus on specific rooms uh, that require attention. Um, and then with that, there's new device management alerts. So you'd be able to, um, you know, trigger based on a certain device health. Um, so that you can sort of take some sort of corrective action uh, for it. So <clears throat> um, you can send that to a channel which comes up uh, as an alert. And then I believe they're saying in um, Q1 of 2022, you're going to be able to trigger to like third party ticketing systems. So you can create a, a third party, uh, like a, I guess a ticket and a third party uh, ticket system, maybe like ServiceNow that maybe has somebody go and look at the room and see if there's something, you know, physically wrong with the appliance or the devices and stuff like that, right? 
Um, and then the next is workspace management. So be able to see um, all of the, the data and analytics uh, for devices in a specific location. So like all of the devices in a in a meeting room. So if you have a, you know, an MTR in there with multiple devices and TVs and, and so on, you'll be able to see all of that information and the health of um, uh, that room and all of the, I guess, the devices within there. Um, and just making sure that everything sort of conforms to like a specific standard that you're going to be doing so that uh, what they're saying is by the uh, end of February 2022, but um, I'm not sure, you know, if things will change by then. Uh, and then what also is new as well that you didn't have before, you'd be able to manage Surface Hubs in Teams Admin Center. So previously, uh, you know, you'd have to register them and manage them through Intune. And now they're bringing that uh, experience into the Teams Admin Center to be able to manage them there as well. Um, and then <clears throat> there's actually a new type of, um, um, I guess, I, I guess uh, Teams devices, which are like, uh, they're called displays. So Galink uh, is coming out with the Desk Vision uh, AI-024, which is basically a 24-inch display that can be a standalone um, device for Teams collaboration. Um, and um, you can also connect it to a, um, to a PC to be like a second monitor. It includes things like, you know, speakerphone, audio, video, uh, that kind of functionality. So these are, I think, some of the some of the newer types of devices that are coming out, and I'm I'm sure that a lot of the other manufacturers are looking to build something like this um, in the coming year. So, uh, over to you, Dino, to talk about uh, the new, uh, I guess, SIP SIP gateway. Yeah, thanks, Ab. So for a very long time, um, since Teams has been introduced and the calling workloads have. Um, transition from Skype to Teams, customers have been asking for the capability of being able to use their legacy uh, legacy telephone sets, you know, on Teams. So, you know, um, the ability to be able to use like Cisco phones, for example, they're moving, migrating from Cisco to, to Teams. They want to be able to use these sets and not lose their investment. So Microsoft uh, announced uh, the SIP gateway functionality back at Ignite, and uh, on December 6th, they, they GA the SIP gateway functionality. So what the heck is this SIP gateway and how does it help us? Well, exactly like what I just talked about, um, Microsoft wanted a way to, to enable um, the core calling functionality for these customers running these legacy uh, telephone sets and be able to allow them to be used in Teams. So. Out of the gate, um, and so before I, I talk about what's supported, I think it's important to know, um, you know, Microsoft already has a SIP gateway that for Skype phones or three PIP phones, and that's continuing to work and still works. But the, the difference here is that uh, those were already certified phones or three PIP phones that worked on Skype for Business. So what we're talking about here are phones that previously weren't certified or couldn't work on Skype for Business. So with that, we've got um, out of the gate at, at GA, we have support for Cisco IP phones, um, very popular 6821, the 7800, and the 8800 series. Um, the full line of poly uh, VDX phones. So there's this is this is a big one. There's a lot of them out there. These phones are already supported on the uh, three or three pip enabled phones. So depending on the customer, if you already uh, using them under the three pit mode, you might consider going to the SIP gateway or, or just you could remain on the three pit mode. Um, Galink, the T series uh, is supported and the audio code 400 HD series um, is also supported under the gate. So and with that, the, the current feature list is uh, the ability obviously to make and receive calls. You can hold and resume calls, uh, mute and unmute, voicemail with message waiting indicator, you can transfer a call, forward a call, uh, join a team meeting, which is obviously important. It does support DTMF and uh, codes and do not disturb mode. The SIP gateway today only supports IPv4. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any plans for roadmap for IPv6. So your phones will have to have an IPv4 address. There is no E901 support today. Um, in terms of licensing, it doesn't cost anything extra from a Microsoft perspective to do this. So if you're a Teams user, 
that wants to use a Cisco phone, for example, there, there wouldn't be a Microsoft related cost, just like there isn't for a Teams phone. However, um, if Cisco, you know, requires you to pay for their MVP license, so uh, in Canadian dollars, it's somewhere up to about 200 bucks a phone just to get that firmware enabled. Um, so there is some cost associated with it. The VBX, there, it, it's a free upgrade uh, to, to switch to the uh, SIP2.0 standard. I think the A-Link is the same. There's no charge. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about audio codes. I, I think it's also free. Um, so yeah, so that that's probably going to weigh into the customer's decision. Um, you know, I'm not sure about roadmap, not not officially announced by Microsoft, but lots of customers are asking for analog support to be able to support uh, analog gateways so that they could, you know, it, you know, I know it's uh, these things should be retired, but there's still a lot of demand to be able to use analog gateways like overhead pagers, door support, um, and then yes, there's still support for fax. As people are people are asking for that. Hopefully, my talent and Avaya will also be made available because I, I have a lot of customers with, you know, pretty modern Mitel and Avaya phone sets. Um, it's in terms of language support, we have English, Spanish, Japanese, German, French, and uh, Portuguese. And so with that, I'll pass it over to Michael to talk a little bit about setup. Yeah, thanks, Tino. Yeah, I think the, the big thing with the three PIP phones that are using the Skype interop service, that service is going away uh, July 31st, 2023. So uh, if you have those devices, you also need to think about you moving those or transitioning those over to the SIP gateway. And so now that uh, the feature has gone uh, general availability, uh, we have a new policy that controls it. So there's a calling policy. And if you go in the Teams admin center, there's a, an option that says, uh, SIP devices can be used for calls. And so any user that has that policy with that feature turned on, they can then sign into one of these SIP devices. By default, that policy is turned off. So uh, it's not like someone could just plug in a, a VVX phone and sign into it. Uh, you will have to have a policy that will allow them to have that feature. And the, the service is provisioned in North America, EMEA and, and APAC regions. So we, we do have that a global coverage. And so how it works, is you're going to have to configure the handset with a, a provisioning URL from Microsoft. So these are published. The, the IP is used for the service is published as well. So you need, may need to use you know, conditional access to allow them. You may, to, may need to adjust your firewall rules to, to allow this, this infrastructure. Uh, but basically, you're going to have to put that provisioning URL in the device. So that's either done through DHCP or manually. And that does mean that it's not pointing to your maybe existing provisioning services that you have used from the vendor. So you may lose some of the customizations that you're pushing out uh, in that aspect. So you have to keep that in mind. And then basically because the provisioning is done from the Microsoft service, Microsoft's controlling what devices are permitted. So as Dino mentioned, there's a handful of manufacturers and, and certain devices that are supported. And because Microsoft is kind of uh, fronting the authentication uh, with a web uh, web app. Uh, we don't actually get the SIP credentials that are being used on the device. So it's not like you could take the username and password for that that's given to that device and go to another device and try and sign into it. You won't be able to access that information. So uh, when you get the device connected to the provisioning service, you're gonna hit sign on. It's gonna show you an authentication URL similar to when you do a web sign in on a Teams phone. And it's going to give you a pairing code. You're going to go to another device, your your mobile device, your mobile phone, your laptop, your desktop. You're going to go to that URL, put the code in, and then you're going to authenticate with your user credentials. That that device is going to then uh, show up in the Teams admin center, uh, as as have mentioned, where you can uh, you know sign out of the device. You can do uh, remote provisioning. You can restart. You can check for updates. Also, the preview label has been removed. I think that was still showing for for a couple of weeks. So. You have that 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 manageability for the, for these SIP devices. Uh, if you're dealing with common area devices, you can uh, do that one or bulk import, similar to like on the Android side, for for handsets. Uh, um, so you would get, you know, a bunch of verification codes. You can go to the device. There's a pairing code that you're going to use. So it's a key sequence that you're going to type in, put your code in, and then it's going to show up in the admin center where you can then go to the sign in URL, put the credentials in, and, and then sign in the device remotely. So uh, similar to ex experience as the, the, the Teams uh, Android handsets. 
And so, like I mentioned before, the sign-in process is abstracted with that uh, uh, web authentication mechanism. So the SIP device doesn't support OAuth, right? So we're not using modern authentication. We need to make adjustments on our conditional access because it is using that SIP registration, which is what's supported by those devices. So keep that in mind. Uh, and again, you can't you know, get those details to sign into to a device that's maybe not on the list. Uh, my hope, similar to, to Dino's, is uh, support for ATAs, uh, support for paging devices. So, uh, you know, it's a paging endpoint being able to direct register so that we don't have to deploy a full session border controller uh, on premises, set up direct routing just for the ability to, to hit a paging overhead paging device. So, uh, a lot of information, and uh, hopefully, we see just the start of the roadmap for, for this functionality. Well, that's great, guys. Uh, good coverage of all the latest, greatest stuff with devices. It's uh, devices are, of course, front and center with user experience. So nice to see this uh, this evolving. All right, folks. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Mm -hmm.